What's going on guys? Uh, had a little more time so I figured I would record another video. Um, I didn't post over here but I picked up one of these Hogue Decas in Magna Cut. Um, just general impression. Well, let me first of all back up. <laughs> uh, I ha I've had this knife for maybe three weeks or so. Um, as soon as they went live on GP Knives. So however long that was. I put maybe a week and a half of just general 9 to 5 type of use. Um opening some boxes, opening some plastic uh, packaging, um, you know, just general light stuff like that. Nothing crazy, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, the edge, it was still, oh, I, I feed my dog canned food now. Um, and there's this thing that, here, I guess I can show you on this. There's this thing, I used to be a stalker um, in college. There's this thing called a tray cut. Sometimes you'll see like the uh, just the very bottom of a box cut off and then the entire top is exposed so you can easily grab things out of it. I tray cut um, several boxes of canned dog food, um, which used the tip a good bit. So um, you can kind of see there, there's a little mark on the tip, but um, nothing crazy. Uh, the edge was still pretty sharp. I would say it was, it was, it came sharp. Um, but it was still, I would say comparably about the same as it came from the factory or whatever. Um, I wanted to go ahead and knock that edge off. I didn't have a lot of, uh, time or things to use the knife on, uh, work. <laughs> it's the same story. That's why I haven't been posting a lot of videos. You know, I've said that before. So I had happened to have a half of a cardboard box that I had used for a cut test before. And I just took one piece of that cardboard box and I cut it up. Um, you can see those pictures on my Instagram page. And that's not a plug or anything to, to force traffic over there. It's just that I'm not going to be able to fit all of this in the screen. You can, you can see here. Um, I'm not going to be able to fit all this in the, in the frame. And I'm also not going to change the angle. But you can see here kind of how much it is uh i would say it's probably 12 inches by maybe i don't know 24 28 inches something like that but you can see it better on my instagram page which i'll link down below in the comments i always link down below in the comments um that cutting that amount of cardboard ended up dulling the edge it no longer feels very um it felt very sticky and aggressively sharp out of the box, out of the packaging. Um, it's taken that off. I'm sure most people would still probably consider it sharp, but that's an entirely different conversation for a different day. Um, this is kind of how it cuts. You can see it will cut the paper, but you can see all those kind of like uh, tattered edges, which shows it's not, it's not really all that sharp. And I, I'll do it again here on camera. So it's the same piece of paper. So it's, it's supposed to be 20 weight uh, printer paper, which you know is pretty standard, but it feels a little thicker than that. So you can see kind of towards the end of that cut there, got a little, got a little hard to cut. We'll do one or two more just to, just to kind of show you guys. Uh oh, let's let's do that one more time. There we go. So you can see on camera. Um, that I'm not, I'm not making anything up. You can see they're kind of tattered and torn, and you can see kind of in certain places it was hanging up a little bit. So it will still cut, but it's not, it's not what I would consider sharp, or a lot of um, guys that sharpen would consider sharp per se. So um, some questions came up about that, uh, which I thought were were fairly um, reasonable. I compared it to my K390. Endura. The only reason why I compared it to my K390 Endura is because K390 is <laughs> right at this moment. Uh, this would be my preferred steel. If I could have this steel, uh, if I could have any steel on any knife, it would be K390. Why, Clint? Why is it K390? I first of all, let me say because we are going to talk about this stainless steel. 
I prefer tool steels. Um, I know most of you guys know that, but because I'm talking about Magna Cut and because I also have a Spider Co, that, those videos typically appeal to people that don't necessarily watch my videos per se. Um, I have a bias towards tool steel, flat out, point blank, period, full stop. I prefer tool steel because I don't feel like I want to sacrifice the edge stability and in a steel like this, the wear resistance that I, you typically have to sacrifice to get more of that corrosion resistance. I just don't feel that, that I have a need for that much corrosion resistance um, personally. And this knife, it does not disappoint. I've smacked it into my farm sink. Um, I've used it tons and tons and tons. Even on the first edge, I, I made that comparison as well. On the very first factory edge, I would say that this knife cut roughly 25% longer than this knife. I have not smacked this edge into anything or anything of that nature, so I can't comment on edge stability um, or anything like that. Plenty of people picked up the whole uh, DECA in Magna Cut, so I'm sure you'll get plenty of perspective and opinion from very knowledgeable people that sharpen um, and use their knives in a way that is going to give you a better perspective on what the steel in the Hogue Decca, I'm only talking about the Hogue Decca Magna Cut um, in general. Uh, the, que the One of the questions that came up when I mentioned the 25% number was, would laying the edge back possibly give this, this knife a little more wear resistance and uh, also be able to have a little more edge stability even at that lower edge angle because it is Magna Cut and that's supposed to be one of its claims to fame. I don't know how well you can see that. Let's see. There we go. Um, this knife is roughly 20 thousandths behind the edge, and that bevel is pretty apparent. Um, I would say I haven't measured this. I don't have a tool to measure it. Um, I no longer have a wicked edge, so I don't have a guided system that I can put this on and kind of get a gauge for the edge. But this edge bevel, I would... I would Venture to say, if it's 20 thousandths behind the edge and this bevel is this wide, this is probably about 15 degrees per side, um, which is pretty standard. 20 thousandths behind the edge is pretty standard. I do have my calipers out, so I can go ahead and show you that as well. So let's see. Let's zero this out. I think you can see it's zeroed. There you go. So we're going to measure at the tip. Uh, oh, it's in millimeters, guys. Hold on a second. Um, let's see. There we go. Now it's in inches. It's zeroed. Let's go ahead and measure behind the edge. So you can see at the tip, it's 20 thousandths, almost 21. About midway. Let's see. About midway. Whoa. Slip right off the edge there. Hold on. About halfway. I keep slipping. Sorry, guys. About halfway, you've got 25 thousandths. I don't. There we go. Well, you got t about 23, 24 thousandths. And then here at the heel, you've got. Let's see. Here at the heel, you've got. 22 thousandths, 22. So like I said, it's, it's around, it's roughly 20 thousandths behind the edge, which is pretty standard. Um, as far as the knife goes itself, um, let's talk about that. I have noticed that this, this pocket clip, it's not quite as strong as I'm used to. Um, the knife hasn't fallen out of my pocket, but I have noticed that the, the knife hasn't been seated as deeply as when I put it in my pocket. Uh, haven't had any issues with the um, polymer handle. You know, I know that is going to be one of the things that people talk about. They talked about it with the bug out. Hasn't given me any issues. When I did all of that cardboard cutting, I did find myself putting my thumb on the jimping. Um, I'm not going to say that jimping has ever helped me per se to hold my, my thumb on a knife. But what I will say is it's not aggressive enough that it bothered me. Um, the edges, even though I have not filed the edges down, they are sharp if you force your hand in here. Um, I wouldn't say sharp. They're they're not chamfered. Um, I wouldn't say they're sharp like I feel like I'm going to cut myself on them when I'm running my finger in here. Uh, you can kind of see. So I didn't have really any hot spots there. Uh, the clip itself 
the back of the clip because my hand is a little bit larger. When I held onto that clip, you can see how it kind of digs into the meaty part of my hand right here, this pad. There was a little hot spot there. Uh, the knife performed well. The tip is pretty acute. So like I said, when I was doing some of those, some of that tray cutting and stuff like that, it worked very well for me. Uh, overall, I would have to say that the knife has performed kind of how I expected it to perform. Uh, it's held an edge fairly well. It hasn't, you know, blown me out of the water. Granted, this is the just the factory edge. I have not sharpened this knife at all. Um, I'm going to get into that in a second. The size, the weight, the shape, everything is pretty similar to a bug out, which is what I was expecting. Um, I, I think for $127 is what I think I paid for this. And to be able to try out some Magna Cut, I, I think it, it's a pretty good deal. Um, I'm not making any definitive statements about Magna Cut quite yet. Um, like I said, all I can tell you is compared to this K390, oh, why are you comparing it to K390, Clint? These two knives aren't, these two steels are not necessarily in the same category or necessarily comparable. Because this, again, is my preferred steel um, at the moment, has been for maybe a year or so, um, came highly recommended by some guys that I respect their opinion on steel and sharpening and all those things. They really like it uh, for a lot of the same reasons I just stated. But um, if Magna Cut is not going to perform close or e equal to and or beat my preferred steel, I don't really see the point. Um, and that might be a little harsh, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, why would I pick something that does not perform as well um, or close enough to margin of error as my preferred steel if I don't have to? Um, that's just my opinion at this point. I haven't seen um, that level of performance, at least in wear resistance. Again, I have not done any type of durability testing on the edge. Um, I cannot tell you how stable this edge is. I've only used it on fairly soft things, um, not even any hard plastics per se. So I cannot comment on the stability of the edge. But like I said, there are other people out there that have the same exact knife that will um, be coming to the table with some information. So I think you'll be able to get a pretty broad perspective on how this uh, steel performs from Hogue in the DECA. Um, so it should be a pretty good um, experiment <laughs> and it should be a pretty good data point. But I'm now going to go ahead and sharpen this knife up. I'm definitely going to use the 100 and the, uh, hold on a second, the 240 side of sides of this stone which these are veneve resin bonded stones i will tell you i do need to resurface these stones so i know they're not going to cut as efficiently as they should i'm and i'm just telling you all this for full disclosure because um i fully foresee <laughs> there being uh comments as to me not being blown away by magna cut because i know it's the the latest greatest hottest all that type of steel. So I want to put all of the caveats out there so that way everything is in full disclosure and nothing appears to be um, masked or uh, downplayed. So I, pr I probably could resurface these stones. I ordered a uh, 3D printing glass plate so that way I can go ahead and flatten these stones. I've had the powder forever, silicone powder forever, silicon powder forever, just haven't had the glass plate. So I am going to resurface these stones, but I have time today to sharpen this knife. So I am going to use the uh, 100, 240 side of this stone and pro probably, possibly the 400 grit side of this stone. Um, these do run a little finer. They give a little bit of a finer finish than what the grit would suggest. Um, and even with them being a little bit, the, the stones, the resin being a little bit worn down, even more so. Um, so I'm probably going to keep it a little more to the core side. I'm not going to do any type of mirror polish, uh, but that's kind of where it stands, guys. I think that for $127, the Hogue Deca and Magna Cut is a pretty good deal. Um, haven't been wowed by the Magna Cut at this point, but honestly, I was expecting it to be fine. You know, good, okay. Um, kind of what you would expect out of M390, um, if I can say that. <laughs> and I know that's going to be controversial too, but um, 
yeah, so that that's that's kind of where things stand. Uh, I know it was a little bit of a rambly video, but I uh, just wanted to give you guys some context. I wanted to give you guys my initial experience with the factory edge and uh i'll report back once i have a little bit more information i appreciate you guys watching remember a lazy man carries a dull knife